There we go. I think I'm live. There we go. I am live. Good morning. There we go. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Kimberly. Good morning, Margo. Good morning, Becky. Good morning, my Jennifer. Good morning, Linda. Good morning, Kathy. It's Kathy Neal Stevens. And Patricia. And my other Kathy. And Pat. Good morning, Pat. Morning, Shelly. My crew's starting to get here. My crew, my tribe. Tribe starting to sign in. Lots to talk about. Not too much pressing, but lots to talk about. Lock my sets up. Isn't it pretty? Yes, Merry Christmas in July, everyone. People think I'm nuts, but that's okay. Do you know how hot it is in my shop right now and me to try to do Christmas? I don't know how you Southern folk can even remotely deal. I just don't know. I give mad props to Margo, who is like only inches away from the equator. Um, and she's hotter than Hades down there. Us Northern folk like uh, know what the snow looks like at least. Good morning, good morning. Karen, Debbie, Jody, Megan, Diane, Miriam, Linda, Myra, Angela, Eileen, Pat, Vicki, Tracy. Good morning, guys. The Sassy Tribe. That's right, Sassy Tribe. Oh, and look who decides to show up, but Billy. My Billy shows up. He must have good Wi-Fi at the campground because he totally deserted me for the campground. <sighs> Such is life. So pretty, right? How to dig that crap out for the day. Nuts. I cannot be too prepared, right? You cannot be too prepared. Yup. Stay inside. <laughs> Oh, I don't know how Margo does it. Like, it, it's hot in the summer. It's hot in the winter. It's hot all the time. And I want to be a part of that tribe, which is killing me because I will be moving to the great state of Florida in the next couple of years. So, can you, can you tell us a little bit about your company? Oh, gosh. I don't know if you want to know that. But, yes. So, let's start out with getting this party started. Normally I take the sass sign away and uh, whatnot, but we'll do that just because the heat press is on and it's hotter than heck right there. So let's talk about this display for about two seconds before we get focused on my ugly mug. Let's uh, loosen this up just a touch. All right, so let's talk about this. As you can see, and welcome. Hold on. Actually, I should probably do this proper. As you can see, take a good look. And um, I'm going to start describing things. It'll be a little bit different today. We're going to talk about a lot of things. But let's focus on... Does anybody know what the hot color is this year? Eh, anyone? Right. That's it. So let me pan up so you can see my... i got to show you my bow. Like, legit, this is why I'm the bow lady here around where I am. Because... I just make rock awesome bows. We'll talk about all that stuff in a minute. Don't ask any questions about my heat press, my business. We'll get all to that. Don't worry. I have two heat presses. I have, that's the little guy. And that's Big Papa. You will always know him as Big Papa. Anywho. All right. So let's talk about this for a second. Okay. So one of the hottest colors, and let me start off by my typical introduction. This is the sass for Sunday, July 7th, I think it is. And um, we are starting a three-part series of Christmas in July and getting us prepared for vendor fairs and just our overall Christmas 
holiday season. We're going to talk about uh, back to school. We're going to talk about going into Halloween, Thanksgiving, and of course leading up to the largest holiday of our season, which is Christmas. You will see some of the hottest trends that I've been researching for the last couple months as to what is hot and what is now. We're also going to talk about the top 10 list of items that are a must have for the Christmas season and that are great sellers. And I know that's been a huge conversation. Um, but remember, it's just a top 10. Pick and choose what you want off that 10. Um, and we'll go from there. But like I said, there's the the closer up of things. Pretty cool, right? So let me describe to you what's in these pictures just before I move the camera. So we have, this is the Belux. The Belux comes in a vertical and a horizontal view. We also have a keychain that I had done a little bit while back that I turned into a Christmas ornament. We're going to be talking about that um, next week's sass. So I have a gorgeous one that I've been working on. We also have floating ornaments down here. This is a pinch book. I did this for my, as you can see, I put all my grandmother's recipes in here and gave one to each one of my siblings um, for Christmas last year. So this was a hot item for myself. Um, this are the acrylic photo or the color light acrylic panels that you need to have the jig for. So you have the jig, it bends it. Um, so that's also a great seller. Um, you also have obviously... You know what this bad boy is? Our sequin pillows. Because they sparkle. That's right. Okay. I just did a tree on mine. I am not pressing that bad boy. I'm just telling you. So, and up on the wall, which is hard to see, these, um, you get at Amy. These you get at Stan. These guys, you can get at any of the major vendors. Um, it is called the Benelux. B-E-N-E-L-U-X, I believe is how it's spelled. Don't correct me. God, don't correct me today. Um, we also have the floating ornaments. Amy has a variety. This was last year. You can see that these were new last year because I still have the last one in it. Um, these are the floating ornaments that she has. I don't have them all pressed, obviously, because this was my hottest seller, believe it or not. Um, but we'll go over all that. So let me move the camera. We're going to talk about some things. I'm going to look at the good old, which I'm going to call it. So let's get this party started, shall we? And we're going up to housewares on level 13. Amy has what to? Sequin pillowcases? Um, Amy doesn't have sequin pillowcases. Amy has stockings and bags, but not pillowcases. That's not an Amy thing. If that's what you're talking about. At least I'm not aware that she has pillowcases, because that's a stand thing. Um, all right. Let's see if I can get my head shot in there this morning. Well, Y'all happen to totally see my ugliness. All right. Let me let the computer and the delay. Listen to the sass, press four shirts. Hellbound has, oh, Belux ornaments. Yes. Okay, yes. I was like, what are they talking about? Yes, Hellbound does have the MDF. Um, the ones that I have right there are the metal ones. I personally like the metal ones um, for the, the Belux ones. Amy has a different variety of different ornaments. So I, I'm pick and choose as to where I get and what I get. Um, and I'll explain more of that. Thank you, Margo. I was like, what is she talking about? Let's move this back. Head to church. Have fun at church. This is church. It's a different kind of church. All right. Good morning. How is everybody this morning? I'm going to put my hair back because it's hotter than Hades here. Um, for upstate New York. So, let me uh, just put that back. All right. All right. So, as you saw, that was the start of our Christmas in July sale. So as I've told you about, one of the hottest colors this season, one of, there's actually two. We're going to focus on both. One of the hottest colors and or themes um, is navy blue and metal. 
navy blue and metal. Now, I know traditional is a huge thing for Christmas. It will never die out. Tradition never dies out. What does happen is we add in. So you have to think about it this way. As you saw in my tree, navy blue comes in and it acts as an accent piece because hear me out, navy blue is actually considered a neutral. It's a neutral like gray and black and white. So you could add it to any one of your elements, any one of your decor. Navy blue can be added in and give it a nice rich tone. So that's a good thing for that. Metal is also huge. It never dies out, but it's definitely becoming like a resurgence. It's definitely coming back in more natural, more, um, so you're looking at pine and pine cones and more earth tones in the Christmas theme this year. They're really coming in and they're really pulling it back into more natural elements versus the what you're common seeing in the last couple of years are big, loud and obnoxious colors like the lime greens and the reds. And you see a lot of that. Well, that's kind of in the design world. It's starting to take a shift. They're bringing it back to natural. They're bringing it back to tradition. And they're bringing in elements such as navy blue and metal tones. More in the metal tones, though, not necessarily silver and gold, but more in the sense of, and I'm going to pull it off the tree, galvanized metal. Why? Because galvanized metal can actually have a very stately look to it. All right, it tones things down where it's not shiny silver. It will tone things down, bring it back down to nature. That's why it's one of the hottest things that are out right now. So this actually started out as this and I made it to this. It's a galvanized metal. So that's how you can get that look in there. Still be here though. And it's one of those things that just doesn't die out. I know I say it's one of the hottest colors, but honestly, you can actually move it into different themes, which is a great thing. So you can leave it up a little bit longer. Um, so we'll talk about more of that too. So that's one of the hottest colors along with navy blue. All right. Another thing that's hot and it never dies out. And as much as I, oh, Kim's going to love this one. So I am a Christmas traditionalist. Ta -da! As you can see, I'm a Christmas traditionalist person. I am your red, your green, your orange, not orange. Your reds, your greens, your browns. Um, I'm definitely your red and green for Christmas. I might do some burgundy. I might add some gold. But I definitely have more of the jewel tones when it comes to that. I'm not typically black buffalo plaid. Holy Moses, that is the hottest of all the themes this year. It not only is transcending from fall, so where your fall stuff, but it's also transcending right in through Christmas and even beyond. See, black plaid has totally taken the, the reins, as to, so to speak, as to what is in and what is now. And what the beautiful thing about is about black plaid is it literally could go for every season. It's just in how you change it and what accent colors you use. So example, so right now that black plaid that everybody loves is great with yellows and lime greens and teals, all those bright, vibrant colors. But as we start to move into fall, you're going to start toning down those colors. You're going to add some more jewel rich tones, and then you're going to bring it and push it right into Christmas where you can match it with navy blue. You can match it with the galvanized metal. You can match it with the greens and the reds and still make a very stunning statement all with having that, why? Black plaid, why? Because black plaid is neutral, all right? Buffalo plaid, you're kind of stuck. Whereas black plaid, you can literally pair it with any color of the rainbow and it will just pop. So it's one of those things that when you're designing or you're selling things, think of versatility when it comes to your design. So for instance, here is the ornament I did. And if you can see it, it's black, black, it's plaid with black and white. And then I had added just some very subtle um, greens and reds by adding in the, the wreath. Very subtle, very soft. Believe it or not, it, it, it has a very soft element, very country look to it. So there you go. That's that right there. So far we go. Let me, that was a lot real quick. Are they coated in white? Yes, the, the blocks ornaments come this way. They're a metal, you could do two-sided. Um, 
I like these and here's why. They're great for shipping. They're very thin. You can definitely ship these a lot easier um, and a lot less costly to your client. Um, wear and tear, and you know, that kind of thing. But yes, they start out white and you make them that. Oh, uh, wait. Hold on. What did Sam say? What? Sam? I love you guys. So are we over buffalo plaid? Buffalo plaid for Christmas time is definitely a staple. Okay, the red and the black buffalo plaid, the traditional buffalo plaid, is definitely a Christmas staple. That I don't think is ever going to die out. What is coming in and sneaking its way in and definitely taking the place is the white and black buffalo plaid. Why? Again, as I stated, because it can go with any color palette and it could go with any, whether Margo's in Texas, she could totally theme it out or I'm up in New York. Now, a lot of questions have been asked, you know, especially as a designer's point of view. Well, we don't have snow, so I don't, I want designs without snow. The wonderful thing about the black plaid in there is that it really just opens up the doors no matter where you live in the country it definitely can work in a theme it's not one of those well i don't have snow i don't have snowflakes but you can still make it like i did with this one still very christmassy without it having the snow and the snowflakes because you know what texas doesn't get snow at least not southern texas you know earth to the equator where margo lives um or even southern Florida, any of those places just don't get snow. Right? So they can't wrap their brain around it, just like I can't wrap my brain around a life without snow. So there you go. This is where we be, this is where we collide. But themes like this help meld, especially for those who sell on Etsy. You're selling to people literally all over the world. And so you have different climates and different types. This is a great theme that literally crosses borders. Uh Let's see. What is snow? Good old Margo to the rescue. She knows what dripping wet is because she's totally constantly hot. Finally made it on a Sunday. So far, are we all caught up to speed? So for those who just joined, hottest colors of the year. Navy, galvanized metal, um, more of the earth tones, twigs, leaves, that kind of thing. Bringing it back to nature are definitely the hottest theme well the second to hottest theme those are the hottest colors of this year but the hottest theme to this year is the the black and white buffalo plaid so you're going to see that incorporated into a lot of designs you can walk into any home goods store or a hobby lobby or a michaels and you will see black and white black and white plaid i need to slow down my words black and white plaid will be literally integrated into every theme so keep that in mind when you're trying to think of different things. Go Navy. Woohoo! I need a sweating Christmas tree. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about some other things. We're going to back it up <clears throat> from Christmas for just two seconds because you're going to see where I lead up to different things. So... <clears throat> I want to show you how I incorporated this. I'm so excited for this. You have no idea. So you're going to see where I incorporated that navy blue-esque theme into my Thanksgiving. I am so in love with this. You absolutely have no idea. And I'm going to also press a sign that matches it too. So you ready? You ready? You ready? And I'm going to tell you why this is a perfect set and why and different things good morning mom mom's on mom wait till you see this this is right up your alley you wait you wait you're gonna see it okay so here is probably one of the most understated thanksgiving-esque themes that literally you can have right through fall which is a beautiful thing it does it's not one of those hot minute items because think about it we start decorating for fall in september late october or late august especially up here up north because leaves are starting to change and so we start into grabbing at that fall the pumpkin spice all of that fun stuff starts coming out the apples especially here in new york we're the apple capital so all of that stuff starts happening and we start thinking but then it turns into a hot minute now i'm into halloween and then i'm into thanksgiving and then i'm into christmas you see how fast we theme out real quick <laughs> 
All right. Nikki's mom is Sue Castle, for any of those who are playing along with the bouncing ball. I'm her mini-me. If you guys all think Sarah's ma her mini-me, um, I will show you a family picture of a generations that's wholly mini-me's. But I'll do that a little later. Okay. Here it is. How absolutely gorgeous is this theme? Okay, it literally takes a navy s blue pumpkin okay it can sometimes depending on your color profiles on your can take on some more of the the teal tones so check your color profiles for me it comes out in the navy um it is absolutely just stunning it is probably one of the my favorite sets now let's talk about this for one second this set one of the things for a vendor fair that I can tell you that is a, is a go-to item are these darn towels. Why? Because towels are inexpensive. They make great gifts. They make great hostess gifts. They're a grab and go. They're very simple. Now, I'm going to also say, yes, could I do a, a pot holder and a oven mitt? Sure, I could. And that's something you put on your website. But for a vendor fair, I would not put them at a vendor fair. Okay, that's just not something people typically buy, but they'll buy towel sets. So what I did was, is I took one of Stan's 11 by 18 towels, made it into a full bleed, and then as my accent towel, I took the, the 15 by 25 and made it into an accent. How gorgeous is that? I am absolutely in love with this set. I'm going to show you the sign that I made to go with it, and it just makes the perfect theme that literally will stretch right through fall into Thanksgiving. And it's, and you can take or keep the words on. I love the words just because it adds a little bit of punch. But how beautiful is that? I'll show you the full towel. I mean, loving my 18. And I even double pressed this bad boy too because I didn't want to turn on Big Papa last night. So I only had on the little guy and I had to, I had to actually double press. Use my pencil line. And there you go. Isn't she gorgeous? I had so much fun making this too. Like it, it just kept coming alive to me as I was doing it. So absolutely stunning. And sell it as a set. Sell it as a fingertip towel and a hand towel. I call these fingertip towels because they're 11 by 18. Um, these were great for bathrooms. They're great for kitchens. They're great for anything. They're great for gift giving. Um, like I said, great hostess gifts, great teacher gifts, believe it or not, because it's not your atypical gift. Um, you know, that kind of thing. I mean, really. Oh, and his towels are just amazingly soft. Like you, you really just want to pet them. Or pet them. They're my fancy towels. Everybody knows that they're as my fancy towels. Definitely sell things as sets. Remember when you're going to a vendor fair. Now remember, we're going to talk about Etsy shops or online shops versus vendor fair. So for a vendor fair, sets are really just a cool idea. And if you put them in like a little t-shirt box, like you give them a t-shirt box, that's another great idea. Also, pro tip for a vendor fair. People are going to want to touch these, okay? There is no doubt in my mind that people are going to want to touch these. So two tips that you can use. A, put them in a bag so that they're in like a Ziploc bag to be protected from people using their grubby little hands or you take it and you know the pants hanger that you can use that has the clips, clip them. They have to have the ones that slide though because if your towels are a little bit wider or whatnot. Clip them as a set and put the word sample. Use your luggage tags and put on the luggage tag sample so that people can see what the design looks like and then you could have a fresh set behind your table. All right, then they can sit here and just kind of filter through like they were shopping. They can see what they want. They can touch it. They can feel it because people are a visual, but they're also textile. So if you have it on there like you would on a rack when you buy it in the store, this way you can touch it. Why do you think towels are out in the open? You don't see towels packaged in like your Walmart, your Target, your Kohl's, right? Because people need to touch it. But the problem is, is we put so much hard work into our towels. I'm sorry, I don't want people getting their grubby hands all over it. Most of all, not a candy apple in a fall festival fair. I don't want that stuff all over my good hard work. So create samples, all right? Samples are huge. They can then feel it. Another sample idea is you could take one of Stan's towels, the big beach towels, okay? And I'm gonna show you how you do that next week, but here's a, a little hint to what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take one of his 
beach towels. Not only am I going to put my logo on it to put on a table, but I'm also going to use it and put my designs in like blocks so I can hang it behind me. All right. It now becomes my backdrop for my particular sale. The nice part is, is I didn't have to do a bunch of shirts. I could do block designs. People could still go up and touch it if they wanted to, but it gives a great visual to your background. And I'll show you that next week when I do that. But that's another idea and tip for adding a different part of an element to your landscape. Oh my goodness gracious, my best friend is watching for the absolute first time ever, I have to tell you. Um, Lord, now my face is going to turn red. Now she can see me in all my craziness. Um, so we have that towel. I'm sorry, I totally digress. I saw her pop on. Um, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to press this really quick. You don't need to see me press it. This is one of Amy's MDF signs it's a four by 11 and we're going to put an image on it that matches that towel set that we absolutely love it's 380 medium to light pressure um and it's for 50 seconds so i'm gonna get this all prepped while this is pressing we're gonna talk more i can't even believe she's watching this right now you have no idea i'm gonna so harass her later Someone used a beach towel to show. Absolutely. I mean, that's the beach towel is just an amazing. Stan was telling me about it. I can't claim that design, by the way. That idea of the beach towel and putting the design. That totally came from Stan from another person who did it. So that's that's a them. <laughs> Give me one second. Uh, all right. Well, that's cooking away, doing what it needs to do. We're going to talk about some other things like the top 10 list. Get your pen and paper out, people. All right. Top 10 list of the most sold items as compiled by our admin team are as follows. Now, the top three are ornaments, but they're very particular shaped ornaments. So a lot of the Benelux, which is this shape, all right, was probably, was definitely my most top seller. You'll also see a lot of um, the designs made into that shape also round is another one they're the most two common shapes for ornaments when it comes to anything of the mdf or the aluminum those are the top you also have <clears throat> amy's floating ornaments she has a wide variety of different styles but I can tell you this one in particular is probably the highest one and what i did last year is i made it into a snow globe if you remember um I did it as a memorial. We put some different little goodies here in the bottom and it becomes a snow globe. One second. Come on, drop. Thank you. Let's see how it press. Give me one second. Naturally, it presses perfectly. Because, you know, I have to. Oh, hot Toledo. Give me one second, guys. I'm going to burn my fingers today. Burn my fingers. All right. Let's let this cool for a second. Holy Toledo. Okay. So ornaments. So we've got the Benelux. We have the floating ones. We also have what they call the acrylic or the color light. So the color light is just like that photo panel, except it also comes in smaller shapes. So here it is. This is the color light. You can get these at Condi. All right. They are great for putting behind ornaments. I mean, I'm going to show you, or behind lights, and I'll show you real quick. Even though it's plain, if you look, you put a light behind that, it becomes a stunning showpiece. All right, so let me show you what, this is also a color light panel, but I'll show you what it looks like. So that's what happens when you put an image behind, you know, lighting behind it. It just really makes your image pop. Um, that's a color, color light panel. panel. God, I can't even use my words today. Great idea with the individual felt squares. Yes, you could definitely do individual felt squares. Um, that's one of the other things. You can also just take your fabric. You can go get poly fabric, wrap it around cardboard, tape it on the back, create photo panels. The only reason I'm saying use the towels because you can drape the towel over that bar you're going to need to do, or you can hang it on clips and you only have to hang one, not 10. So there is that. Love BFFs. She is definitely my partner in crime. There is no doubt in my mind on that one. All right. 
So you have your Benelux, you have your floating ornament, and your acrylic. Those are the top three um, ornament styles. So it's the aluminum Benelux and the, the Benelux and the round. I can't forget the round. I mean, you'll see in the graphics group that it definitely is something that we focus on those particular shapes. Um, so those are most sought after. So if you're looking for them, listen, I got to be honest, the horizontal is definitely more popular than the vertical. All right. So if you're starting to stock up on your ornaments, horizontal is more popular than the vertical. It really just depends on your design. But I did want to show you that you could use it. And believe it or not, this is a flag design of mine that I shrunk down and put it on an ornament. Think outside the box. All right, so there's those type of things, but the horizontal is definitely um, a better option. Now you're gonna ask me, do you put the same design on the back? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'll put the year, if there isn't a year on the front, especially if there's a picture on the front. Um, sometimes I'll just put the year on the back. Do I always put something on the back? No. Um, do I put the same image on the front and the back? No, no I don't, but I will create a image that will coincide or coordinate with the front of that. The, the front of that ornament so that it's not just plain white. If anything, I definitely make sure there's the year on the back because I don't know about you, but that was something that my mom's always, always did. And that was have ornament for that year. So this will be my ornament for this year. It says 2019. Um, so that'll be my ornament for this year. So, you know, I, it's a collection thing for me. I had requests for square version of the Benelux shape more than the Benelux, easier for photos and rectangles. That may be. And if that's what sold for you last year, then go with what you know. Um, people just like fun shapes. I think that's what it all came down to. I could not get and sell these to save my life up here. They just, they weren't fans. So, which is fine. Um... Let's see if they're answering questions. Give me one second. I'm just checking on things. Everybody's replying to everybody and helping me out here. Helping us to start out. All right. You want to see that sign? Let me show you. Now that she's cooled off. Huh? What, Julie Baker? I have no idea. I have no idea what you're asking me, sweetheart. Not a clue. <laughs> All right, so here's the sign that goes with the absolutely, and mom, I'm just saying, Val might totally steal this on you first. She might. She does look closer. So don't be surprised. Val tends to steal those things. So there you go. So here's the, here is this set, okay? Oh, I was talking about shapes. Okay. Thank you, Catherine. All right. And here is the sign. How pretty is that? Pretty, right? So pretty. Now, this is only an 11 by um, 4. But you put it in your, you know, anywhere has the holes you can put the ribbon in. But it adds just a little bit. It's not overbearing. It's not huge, but it adds a little bit. Now, I love this set too. Mama, don't you know? Okay, so let's talk about this for two seconds. I'm going to move this bow. Whoopsies. Hold, please. So, for those who make wreaths. Okay, I've been talking about this for a little while. Another idea, too, is any signs that are the 4x11 MDF, okay, fit perfectly in a wreath. Okay, they definitely are the perfect size to add a little bit of something to your wreath, okay? Also, what works are the large luggage tags or uh, bag tags. Margo's forever using them for sports. I'm forever using them for everything else. Okay? So, again, another thing to add because these are so big. This is another thing that you can add a monogram to, hang it in the center. It is perfect for, like, your 12 to, I think this is a, this might be a 15-inch wreath. 
I don't know what the exact size is on that one, but that makes a perfect addition as well. So you can market to those who sell wreaths. But signs are huge. And some of you guys also make wreaths. So, I mean, it's kind of one of those things. Let me just move things. So, for those who missed, here's the sign. I'm absolutely in love with this sign. Gotta say. Wreath signs are a big market. Oh, yes, they are. Yes. Yes, they are. Tap into that market. This is also a great side for fun little sayings, Christmas sayings, holiday sayings, whatever the case may be. But these are just the perfect size being that, you know, they're only a four by 11. They can be, work for anybody who has any size printer and they can work for somebody who's got a 15 by 15 press. So there you go. The blank sign Nikki just pressed can be found. Yes. And then I will be loading this design to my my Etsy page um, later today, along with my gorgeous, my very gorgeous set. That is mine, by the way, Mother Val. It is mine. It is mine. All right. So, also, don't forget these two, okay? Amy has these. These are your Tree of Life. Remember, they're a couple different sides. Don't be intimidated by them. They're really not that hard. I definitely did a template for them, and in past sasses, I'll reiterate it again, when you're lining things up, you line it up with the leaves, not the circle. Did you hear what I said? Because you're all going to try to do it. Do not line it up with the circle, okay? Because believe it or not, the circle is wonky. Not, it's just the design, okay? But line it up when you're laying your template down, line it up with the leaves. Now, if you're going to do it two-sided like I've done, you mirror only the name, not the image. I repeat, you mirror only, if you're doing the backside, you only mirror the image, I'm sorry, you only mirror the name, not the image, because then those leaves don't line up, okay? So yes, I have pressed the back of this. So here's my fall, right? This is the summer one. So I did summer first, completely mirrored it. Okay, when you're, you're doing your, whatever side you pick is the front and the back. So one side is completely mirrored, name and leaves. Okay? But when you're flipping it over, you only mirror the name. So that means you're going to actually have to go do that. So I don't know how you do it in your design program. I just know in Sawgrass I hit the unmirrored button. But in the actual design I'm making, I make sure that I flip this first before I print it. So only flip this, not this. All right, we'll touch base on that. Somebody's gonna message me within 10 seconds after the sass is going, what did you say with that again? Don't worry, we'll go over it. All right, so this is also a great idea, great for gift giving, um, especially because you can do two-sided. You could definitely do all sorts of fun stuff with that. Um, getting back to our top 10 list, towels are absolutely huge at Christmas time, ironically enough. And why are they a big item? Well, because they're decorative, they're inexpensive. They are definitely under the 20. And for me, they're right at the $10 mark um, in my market. So I definitely can see whereas, and you're gonna ask me what I'm gonna sell that set for. I know it right now, you're gonna ask me. It'll probably go for about $15 for that set, for the little fingertip towel and the hand towel. So there you go, there's your answer. <laughs> um, but they're themed. And people like to have those cutesy towels for their, bathrooms for their guest bathrooms for their kitchens they just are perfect they add a little bit of touch without breaking the bank so that's why towels are huge another big thing are the santa sacks believe it or not santa sacks are big now there are two different kinds of santa sacks that stan carries okay one that you have to use vinyl for and one that can be for sublimation um you have to go to his website you have to find out which ones are which Read the description, people, because you know what? I'm not going to describe that again to you. So make sure you just read which one you're grabbing first. Um, mine's way up there. Or I get it for you. That one I did in vinyl. I just don't think you want to see me climb. Big girl climbing is never pretty. So I'll grab that down for next week so you guys can see it. I used vinyl on it because I wanted glitter. Why else? I love anything that sparkles. So that is what I'll show you next week. But that's one of the top 10. Another top 10 item are photo slates. Unfamiliar with photo slates? Hmm, let's talk about it, shall we? 
So, the photo slates can I typically sell for me are a five by five, five and a half by five and a half, or the seven and a half by seven and a half. So the photo slates are really easy to do. You just gotta make sure you pay attention to what you're doing. And we can talk about that. Amy's done videos on them a trillion because she sells a ton of these. Um, these are in our top 10. Photo slates are a great thing. You don't, it's not necessarily where you're gonna put a Christmas theme on it or a Thanksgiving theme, because let's be real for two seconds. Let's digress from the, the whole list for a second. When people are buying stuff for the holidays, for gifts, Margo put a poll up and I, I, I laughed because I knew it was something I was gonna talk about. You have to offer items that necessarily aren't holiday based. Okay, you're gonna get people who are gonna buy the definite themed towels and pillows and the decor type of stuff. But when it comes to really gift giving, you need to also have an option for this too, to where it, it, you can put a photo on it, whether it be a memorial slate, whether it be just a family picture, it could be an ultrasound picture. It's a great way to tell grandma and grandpa that baby's coming. Um, fur babies are also a beautiful thing. Or maybe you're hooking up with a local photographer and they take nature photos. How gorgeous would these nature photos look on these? So it doesn't necessarily have to be screaming Christmas or screaming Thanksgiving to be able to sell these. Keep that in mind when you're making things, okay? Because it's not, I mean, when you go to the store, do you buy everybody at Christmas time something that has a Christmas tree on it? Or if you're Jewish, and do you buy something that, you know, for those crazy eight nights that you have? Does it always have to have a, a dreidel and, and, and the eight candles, um, the menorah? I mean, no, it just doesn't. But they're great for garden flags. They might be great for pillows and towels because they're a theme thing, but for gift giving, not necessarily. Okay. The only one for sub is the blank polyester canvas. Thank you. Oh, and I have one of those. I do have one of those. So we talked about this in the past, um, what these can be used for were laundry bags, but believe it or not, the laundry bag that I use is actually a Santa sack. So here it is, it comes blank, so you can add your own design. If you've got a 13 by 19, I mean, that will press beautifully right down the center and whatnot with that, and it will also fit on the bigger presses. If you don't have a bigger press, Maybe press a design up here, design right here, design in the middle. You're going to have to do a couple different pressings, but you can leave it white. You don't have to do full bleed. I recommend you don't do full bleed ever. If that's the case, get yourself one of the red ones and put some vinyl on it. And for those who are doing that printed vinyl stuff, you can make a printed vinyl decal or, you know, hook up with either Marvin or Todd and get some um, printed uh, HTV. I mean, you can do that too. Let them weed it out for you. But most of the time it's because you put last names on it, so it's really just use your own darn vinyl and just go with it. Um, you're going to make me get up there and get it, aren't you? That's next week. I'm not doing it. <laughs> no. Yes. It, it definitely. They have 15 different styles. That's what Jen's writing. They have 15 different styles of the Santa sacks that you can get. Um they so there's lots of versatility to them and make sure if you're doing it at a vendor fair stuff it with stuffing make it look full put that as a backdrop because people want to see how big they are laying flat on your table not such a good idea back to our list garden flags garden flags are always going to be a huge thing now remember we've talked about garden flags probably for a trillion years now you could sell garden flags one of two ways one way is your traditional garden flag. For all those who live in southern states and have no clue what snow is, you can actually go out and change your garden flag in the middle of the winter when it's not 18 degrees and have about 24 feet of snow. For those of us who live in the north, banner flags, you're going to go, what's a banner flag? It's basically taking your garden flag and using, and I posted this, so go pack and look because I'm not going to post it again, and making those garden flags into a banner flag. Right, and you just, it's a simple thing. You buy the caps, they could take it off. You use a dowel, this dowel's a little bit smaller than what it needs to be. And you make it for, so they can hang it on a door. Um, so this is where, this is a win. 
So you can use a garden flag one of two ways. Best garden flags on the market come from hailbound.com and I will never, ever, 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 ever tell you differently, okay? I have literally tested every flag on the market and hers are the best flag. They're the thickest. They take the, the um, ink, absolutely gorgeous. I use single-sided, but I have mastered the art of being able, because they are so thick, to press on both sides. I have mastered that art. I did a tutorial on that, which you can go back and look if you want to do it, but you can even just sell them as a single-sided flag. Um, so there you go. Those are the ones that are the best flags on the market. Another thing, and we're going to press one today, I'm going to show you a double-sided design for it, are Stan's pillowcases. He has a wide variety of different pillowcases, but I gotta tell you my go-to favorite during the holiday time, actually most of the time, because they're snuggle. I call them my snuggle pillow, right? So this is the 18 by 18. He, de he definitely has a smaller one. He also has, I believe in this kind, it might be the 12 by 18. So it's more of like the bolster style. Um, so think of a garden flag turned. <laughs> um, so that those are a great decorative type pillow. Some themed ideas you could do with these decorative pillows. You can go on and get the latitude and longitude of where somebody lives. Um, and home is, and you put all the little numbers, compose the links, one I did last year. Actually, I did a ton of those last year. That was huge um, for me last year, was putting a longitude and longitude of where somebody lives, and then put, this is us, this is home, home is wherever the North Star is, different themes and, and whatnot. Um, but we're gonna press this right now. Um, I've already lint rolled, but I'm gonna lint roll one more time just because it's been sitting here. Um, I'm going to show you the design that I'm going to do. I'm going to do two sided. There yeah, are two sides. Okay. So, oh, 15 by 21. So there is a 15 by 21, but if you want a full bleed, the 12 by 18, you can do a full bleed on for most printers. Um, the, uh, the 15 by 21 will definitely be a, a, um, a more or less like a, for those of you who got bigger printers and don't want to double press. Right. We'll go with that. Hold on one second. So we're going to start off with my Thanksgiving theme or my fall theme. And we're going to press it on one side. And then I'm going to show you what I do with my pillows around here. And an idea that I do here at my own house. And how you can market them. Give me one second. So here's the design we're going to press on one side. Yes, Kimberly, I'm doing black plaid. This will be the design that I am pressing on the one side. All right, if you can tell, I definitely incorporated the, the plaid theme that we're talking about, okay? So we're gonna talk about that. We'll run over the whole list in a minute too, so keep that in mind. This is a work in progress list. Work in progress. Now, if you're asking me, I'm gonna show you real quick what I'm doing. I laid some butcher paper down. I lint rolled my design. I laid my, my image down and then as always, you put butcher paper on the top, just so y'all can see what I'm doing. Right? Cover it, cover it and smother it. Um, and there you go. That's that in a nutshell. Super easy, like legit too easy. Okay. What is that made of? Let me answer some questions. Where's the name you can find the Hailbound.com. It's one word. Hail. H-A-L-E-B-O-N-D.com. B-O-U-N-D.com. Sorry. H-A-L-E-B-O-U-N-D.com is where you find her garden flags. Um, and they just really are the thickest flags on the earth. Thank you, Margo. Thank you to Margo and... Um, Jen, they are totally hauling butt today in the whole uh, links thing because I got to be honest with you, they had no idea what I was going to be talking about. So they are totally kicking butt. So mad props to them. I totally kicking butt on the links today. I truly, truly appreciate you two. I need a heat tape dispenser. Where can I find one? You can find one. I got mine at Johnson Plastics Plus. You can also find them online on Amazon. You just want to make sure it has the oversized one. Let's see how it came out, shall we? 
Oh, it's so pretty. You want to see? And then we'll do it with Christmas time. So when you're talking about pillowcases, all right, you can do one of two things. And something that I do here at my house is one side is for one holiday. Then I flip it over and it's another holiday. That's a bang for your buck. Another thing that I can do where I, can, I tend to get more sales is I sell them as just the cover. And I tell people to use the throw pillows on their couch. As long as they all fit inside here, even if they're slightly larger and they squish them in, they're at least going to fit. You could probably sell more pillowcases without the inserts if people can just reuse the pillows that they already have on their couch because most people do. Yes, you could totally sell it with the insert, but you can also market it without. There you go. Kimberly. Gorgeous, right? Time and tip on the pillowcase, please. I don't know what Stan has as his time and tip, but mine is $385 for $60 on these with medium to light pressure. Isn't that gorgeous? Well, I've got a crooked. I'm sorry. I, I'm crooked, not the pillow. <laughs> gorgeous, right? absolutely stunning all right i'm gonna flip it over and yes this is the um this is the velvet this is the velvet i call them the snuggle pillows this is the velvet one i absolutely love this i love my snuggle pillows do the back and then i'll show you that I'm bringing in the theme of navy into it at this point. I'm using the two, I'm using the hottest color, which is the navy. And I'm also using the black plaid, again, which is a hot theme this year too, and hot color. So give me one second. So let's run down the top seven items that I talked about so far on that list. And that was ornaments. Ornaments, ornaments, ornaments are always huge. Common shapes that are absolutely in the aluminum side that are pretty much best sellers for most people, not all, so please don't kill the messenger, but are the Benelux in the horizontal and round. You'll see a lot of our designers do designs for those two particular shapes. Those are typically the hottest sellers in those shapes. Can you do other shapes? <laughs> Duh, of course you can. Now, you also have the floating ornaments by Amy, but her I would say her top selling one is definitely this one. It's two-sided. It comes apart, for those who have no idea, all you're subbing is the metal plate. And then it just goes back in. I've made these into snow globes. It literally just snaps together. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And you have a great inexpensive ornament to sell for bang for buck so this is probably out of the floating ornaments this one was by far my favorite and i saw that she sold a lot of these last year oh so beautiful so you have those three ornaments all right the next is towels Santa sacks, slates, and garden flags. Those are within the top seven of what we have. I have a list of going over here. That's where my eyes keep shifting. <laughs> um, so those are the top seven. The next three, oh, and pillows too. So there you got eight, all right? We're in the top eight. Now, the next two um, items, the bottom item literally is, if for me, I sold more designs last year in this particular thing at the top 10 and I'll get to that in a second but another thing that I sell a ton of and Amy's gonna have them are the photo blankets I did last week they are a huge money maker and they're really not hard to do all right but do you can personalize those nine panels I've made two designs so Amy has your standard template and I went ahead and made a different template for those one who don't want to have to stretch a picture that I think it's like 9 by 18 whatever the case may be or if you just have a smaller printer I made it so that it was user friendly for smaller printers to be able to put it in those blocks it looks like trees and photo frames and all you do is inset the picture into the design and then you print press and go and you have a very stunning blanket i posted that last week i actually have that in my etsy shop so that you have a template already made mix and match do whatever you want but you know what it just makes it easier and you can still get major bang for buck 
on those photo blankets. Amy's doing a pre-buy right now, which you guys have to get in on because I gotta be honest, if you're ordering these in September, you're already late to the party, okay? You need to be ordering these, pre-selling them to your clients right now. That's what I'm doing, I'm doing a pre-buy and I'm doing a pre-buy at a discounted rate for my clients. But come September, the price goes up. Um, so I'm definitely doing pre-buys in my own uh, physicals, to call it my physicals page and whatnot. So I've already got orders coming in already because I'm doing a pre-buy and people want in at the ground level. You're gonna ask me what I'm selling them for. I know you're going to, so let's talk about it. I sell them for 60 on my pre-buy. Okay, they're gonna jack it up. It's gonna go up to $75 come September, okay? Walmart's selling them for 80. There you go, in a nutshell. And you know, they're gonna pay shipping. Whereas I'm going to take a little bit more time. I'm going to pay attention to those photos. One more, I'm going to give a flying Christmas tree about whether or not your photo looks good or not. Okay, that's the difference between me and the box store. So there you go. Um, there's Coney Island transfer. Yes, he has Duralux coming. If you know what Chromalux is, Duralux is just better and you can actually use it outside. It's got like a five year shelf life um, for outside. So it deals with the sun really well. So they're gonna be great for outdoor signs for like your pool area or your garage or for the front of your door. And we'll get into that once he starts getting into um, that. So I'm super excited and I'm gonna be learning just as much as you are. So for those who missed it, um, Stan just posted about a new product that he's going to be carrying and I'm very excited. And I'll have different shapes too. Um, so we'll, he'll get into more of that. I'm just super excited. As you know, I'm very animated when it comes to new stuff. Um, how much? My Etsy shop is LPB Designs and More. Um, how much what, Samantha Burke? How big are the floating ornaments? Um, I want to say they're about three, four inches. They're at Hailbound. So go to Hailbound. It, it has the dimensions there. Off the top of my head, I don't know. Um, I don't know who what you're asking for. How do you make it into a snow globe? How do I make it into a snow globe? I don't add glitter. <laughs> I add like, um, the confetti. Because here's the reason you don't add glitter to these real quick, because the glitter sticks to the actual aluminum on the inside and it'll cover up your whole image. Ask me how I know that. Mm -hmm. It was great I'm trying to see a person's face and it had glitter all over it. Um, no, so I'll use like confetti. Um, I will use and the different shaped confetti. Uh, so I find little things that I can put in there, but that's how I make it into a snow globe. Um, and you just shake it. It's one of those things. It's just meant to sit on the bottom. You're not adding water. That's not what it is, but it's just to give it the effect of a snow globe by having the snow in the bottom. You can even use the little, um, what's it, snow pellets. Um, anything that just is not going to stick to this, um, the metal, because it will, because it just does. Yes, five-year UV warranty. Thank you, Stan. I'm going to get on the Xmas tree bandwagon this year. Woo! Thank you. The large floating ornaments are four inches. Let's see. Yeah. But you know what you can add is you could probably add the glitter um, confetti. Think of that too. I mean, it's just, it, try different glitters. I just know that that was just a pain and it just sucked. But I did find snowflake glitter confetti so it added a little bit of an element to it. it i think it was an opaque one at the time that i had found that actually worked really well any way to get an excel spreadsheet of all the prices you charge for the holidays over the items no cindy asked if there was a way to to offer what i charge for things and here's why i won't um my prices are my prices and they're set for what I use them for um, and for my area and for my region. I do not want to be picked apart um, or told that I'm anything less 
that I'm undercharging and I'm not charging enough. I'm charging what I feel is right for me and I do not want people to nitpick what I charge. Okay, because everybody charges something different all over the United States. I charge what I feel is appropriate for me based on my time, my effort, and what I, it costs me to get in the item. So in all fairness, I just don't want the, um, the term craft hole thrown at me at any given point um, by anybody to be completely honest with you. So that's why I will not share my prices for my guidelines. I do apologize for that. Um, that's just something I won't do to myself. So people use feathers and looks, yes, feathers can be pretty too. Just be careful though. All right. So photo blankets. And then the last thing on the list on the rounding of the top 10, before I show you this, are cutting boards, believe it or not. Cutting boards don't necessarily have to be Christmas-esque or holiday themed, but they're definitely a modern gram type thing. But cutting boards was a huge seller in the design world for me last year. They make great gifts. They have smaller ones that are great for coffee pots. That's where I have my sitting. It's the small one. Mine sits in front of my coffee pot, actually. They're great for putting serving spoons on. They're great for a variety of other things. They're not just a decorative use. Use them, use them. Or you can have the large ones, which are the 11 by 15. They're a large cutting board. All right. Again, use them. All right. That's what they're meant for. All right. So I'll go over the list in one second. <laughs> Hi, Angela. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So as we talked about, here was the fall, my fall design. I incorporated, incorporated the buffalo plaid into it, the design so that it gave it just that country-esque flair to it. Well, then I took the plaid design to the next level, made it navy. I gotta show you this, I'm sorry. See, I gotta get around here. Mm, goodness gracious. Just cause y'all gotta see the detail here. If you notice, the birds have some blue in them. They have the navy in them. They have the, definitely the greenery. Look, people, no snow. I'll pull back in a second. A uh, cutting board supplier. I use Johnson Plastics, and here is why. Um, I have a clamshell, okay? When Big Daddy was down, I had only my 15 by 15. So while Big Daddy was getting fixed, my 15 by 15 was my go-to. If I buy my cutting boards, my 11 by 15 cutting boards from Condi, they're too big. They don't fit my press. But a true to size 11 by 15 from Johnson Plastics literally sits right under my press. Sorry, I've got a hair that's driving my eye crazy. Um, so there's that. That's the reason for why I use Johnson Plastics because they are a true 15 inches wide. All right, they're not 15 and an eighth. They're 15. This way I didn't have to worry about trying to double press them. Nothing. They are a true blue 11 by 15 and that's why I use them. Yes, I press on my clamshell. Yes, I use a wedge. What's a wedge? Um, which we've talked about in past sasses, but I know somebody who's new who's never seen it is gonna ask. I take just some cardstock. I fold it in half. This is some really thin cardboard. Fold it in half a couple times, two to three times. Just slide it under that front edge closest to you. All right. It creates a wedge because the back of your cut, your back of your press for clamshell users are hitting here first before it's hitting here, creating a very small gap that you don't even see. I do this for slates. Sometimes people are even having pressure issues with the thicker ornaments. This is huge. Consider doing this. Consider stop trying to kill yourself with your clamshell. Just adapt your clamshell. Listen, people are going to tell you sewing away is the best. And I'm going to tell you, no, it's not. Okay. Cause I can tell you why I can do everything a swing away can do. And I have two clamshells. So don't let that deter you. We just have to do things a little bit differently. And you know what? I function on different. So there you go. So this is his going back to this. This is his velvet. Isn't it gorgeous? It's so pretty. It's so pretty. So that is a really beautiful, it's very understated. It doesn't scream necessarily Christmas, but it definitely screams winter. Um, there is definitely a hair bothering my eye. Um, so it definitely is that. 
Very pretty, right? Very winter-esque. So it definitely doesn't play on the whole Christmas, the whole Christmas thing. Is that mine? I don't know, Mom. Is it yours? Are you going to? Oh, and Mom, look, there's a bird on this side, too. My mother's obsessed with birds. <laughs> right? So I added, there's a little bit of bird there. It's just some great fall. She can then flip it over because clearly she's claimed this. And then she has now a Christmas design, a beautiful Christmas pillow. And this way it's dual function. And let me tell you why this is going to fit for people like my mom. My mom's retired. Okay, so she lives down in Florida in a retirement community. They don't have a lot of space. So this is great for those who are in senior living who literally don't have huge spaces to be having 87 pillows to have. This is why I say and I suggest marketing just the covers and saying, listen, you can use your own pillows that you have your throw pillows and use these because all they have to do is take it off their regular everyday pillow and there you go. Or even sell them one insert and you can sell them a couple different themed pillowcases. Think outside the box. So you can add in a New Year's, you can add in what, a fall, you can add in a winter-esque, whatever fun sayings, whatever, whatever the case may be, you can market this as a set. Like I do my flags, a pillowcase of the month or every six months or whatever the case may be. But sell them one insert so that they don't have to store things because they don't have a lot of storage. Let me read this. Yes, they start out at that. Um, so what Stan's selling you in the velvet size, which are my absolute favorite because they take the color amazing, not the burlap doesn't, but they're just the soft snuggly ones, right? Are, um, <laughs> My mom's funny. They're 12 by 12, 14 by 14, 12 by 18, 16 by 16, and 18 by 18. And the one that I'm using today is an 18 by 18. So it's big. Okay. Um, you're looking for insert ideas. Remember you go at least, I think it's like two inches or an inch above. So if it's a 16 by 16, you use an 18 by 18 insert. Make sense? All right. So that's the insert you use for 16 by 16. Because if you want an overstuffed pillow, one that definitely fills it in, that's what you would use. Um, could you use a 16 by 16 insert? Yeah, it just won't be as fluffy. So there you go. If you want fluffy, you go the next size bigger of the inserts. And there you go. Oh my goodness. All right, so last week, last week I pressed this linen um, placemat. There's two ways, and I need to address this. There's two ways to say this phrase. Um, one is in the present, and one is in the past tense. I'm using it in the present sense, okay? There you go, all right? So this was last week's design. This is where, again, you could take your theme, whatever it may be, and you could press one side of your linen placemats that you can get from Halebound. Um, press one side with Thanksgiving, but the beautiful part is, is that you can double-side it, and you can put it on the back. And now I've instantly changed my whole decor with a flip of a linen placemat and made it into Christmas. But if you could tell, I use the same style theme with this particular design. Do I have other designs I'm working on? Of course I do. Um, but this is just, I have some also simple ones too, because don't freak out for all those who have smaller printers, don't want to press. I'm doing a lot of designs where it's literally just in the corner. Um, where you can then add a monogram if you want, but it's just in the corner. Just because, A, you can use it as towels, you can use it as placemats, you could totally think outside the box. Um, I have one actually listed in my shop right now. It's a set of six designs that you can use. Mix and match. They're all themed together for that reason, so each placemat is different. You can blow it up and put it in the center. You have fun with whatever you want to do with it. But... There's also, this isn't listed yet. This will be listed. This is the front and the back that you'll get for this. Amy's linen um, placemats are nice and thick too. Uh, so, you, I mean, look at it. I mean, yes, they crinkle, but you really got to crinkle. All right. But they hold up really well and they take the color absolutely amazing. Yeah, people are simplifying, and that's a thing. Um, people like the idea of front and back. They don't want to have to. And I know that people are going to tell you, well, yeah, you can totally upsell them and whatnot. 
let's be real for two seconds. I'm going to sell more bees with honey than I am with vinegar. I'm going to totally get you in the door by selling you a design that has a front and a back because you can get more versatility out of it. And you're going to come back to me versus a guy that's going to try to sell you two. Sorry, not sorry. That's how I work. I work in a working, working person's world. I work in a budget world. Okay. I, that's how I work. That's how I charge my prices too. I think of the family budget and I think of how it's going to affect it and it still gets me sales and it still gets me what I need to have. And this is why I'm real. This is why I'm honest. And this is why I do what I do every Sunday. There you go. And that's not me just preaching. That's just me being the honest to God truth. And trust me, I argue with my mother all the time over pricing. But when the day comes, she's right there with me. So, we good? I'm going to go over the top ten again. The Benelux, the Floating Ornament, and the, the Acrylic. Um, the Acrylic's from uh, Condi. Uh, the Benelux you can get from Condi or Johnson Plastics or Coastal or whoever your supplier of choice may be. The, you can also get them from Hailbound, but hers are MDF, not the aluminum. The Floating Ornaments come from Hailbound.com. All right? Absolutely love them. Towels are from Coney Island. Get his what his 11 by 18. He calls them sports towels, but let's change it and flip it. He's gonna I'm gonna drive this man absolutely to drink if he doesn't know. He has to do a Jen and I. The fingertip towel, because when you're not in the sports world, it becomes a fingertip towel. And this is the fingertip towel that design I did. Absolutely breathtaking, stunning. I love the whole set idea. This is going to make me top dollar at my vendor shows because people are just going to love them and they're going to feel. Remember tip trick pro tip, um, either put them in bags so people aren't getting their grimy little hands on it or make a sample of them, put them together, put them on the pants hanger that has the clips and then people can sit there, look at them, make sure you put your luggage tag that says sample on it. This way people can get a fresh one from behind your counter. All right, that's a pro tip. Uh, Santa sacks come from Stan. They have 15 different varieties that you can put vinyl on and they have one that you can do for sublimation. So it really just is what you need to do. So not only is it a sublimation, but it's an and more. There you go, you're welcome. Sorry, had to do the pun. Um, slates, photo slates. Uh, photo slates I typically sell are the 15, or the five and a half by five and a half or the seven and a half by seven and a half are the typical sizes that I sell in my world. You decide what you're gonna sell in yours. Garden flags, garden flags, garden flags. They are huge. Also, you could start pushing, um, you could also start pushing like a flag of the month club if you want. Those are great Christmas ideas and they could start up in January. I've talked about my flag of the month club that I've been doing. Pillows, pillows in all shapes and sizes are a great seller at Christmas time. They add a little decorative touch but consider selling them without the insert and encourage people to use the pillows that they have already on their couch that would fit. Or you sell them the insert and sell them a couple extra pillowcases so they can change them out based on theme, holiday, whatever the case may be. Photo blankets. Amy's doing a pre-sale buy on that right now. They'll be coming in mid to late August. They are a huge seller with a really good profit margin. If you do a pre-buy, offer them a little bit of a discount. If they do a pre-buy, this way you're not scrambling and having photo blankets just kind of sitting there. That would make a really great Christmas gift for people. Walmart's gonna get them for 80 bucks, right off the rip, and they're the cheapest around. Um, so like right now, I'm offering mine for 60. They'll go for 75 once the holiday season gets here. Cutting boards is rounding out the top 10. You can buy the little ones, which are like, eight by 10, roughly, don't quote me on the size, or the 11 by 15. Either one is just great to have. The smaller ones are great for in front of your coffee pot, for those coffee bars. You can even use them for wine bars, whatever the case may be. They're a great little additive. Um, they also are a great decorative use as well. The large ones, use them. That's what they're made. They're made out of a tempered glass. Um, you're gonna ask me too, are they dishwasher safe? Read the instructions that are given by the manufacturer on the person that you get it from. So whoever your vendor is, I use Johnson Plastics. Um, please keep in mind though, with anything that you do put in the dishwasher, our dishwashers are running a lot hotter than they used to when these products originally came out. They can take the ink off. They start off gassing that ink. So just be careful. Cover your butt and just put, encourages hand washing only, all right? 
as long as you put that with your product, that covers your butt. Because if they say they put it in the dishwasher, you can say, well, I told you to hand wash it. There you go. You've covered your butt. Um, I need a mock-up for a photo blanket to offer for pre-sale. Actually, you can go to my, I actually, you can use any of my photo blankets that I have, um, that I've done. If you use the one for my Etsy page, I have a mock-up already there. You can also search my name in the group and you can see the two that I've offered. I've already pressed them. You could totally use those photos. Um, you just have to understand my kids' mugs all over them. <laughs> So there you go. But that's a great photo blanket. I did, so I have one in the vertical and one in the horizontal so that you can show people what they can do, what they can offer. If you have a smaller press, I would encourage you not to show them if you're not going to be willing to piece it, the vertical one, because those are full bleed squares. Um, if you're a smaller, per, smaller press, smaller printer, I definitely encourage you to use the one that I have in my Etsy shop just to give them an idea. <sighs> How long is she taking for the pre book? Um, well, I know she has, I think it's like a 500 M M O Q M U something like that. So we're getting close, but we need to hurry up and buy them. She does want to be able to carry them eventually, but we need to get rolling on it. So I would like to say by July, by July 21st, if you haven't even ordered them, you know, I can't guarantee that you'll get them um right away because they do take 30 days to get here so that's why it's not going to be until the end of august don't be afraid of them either um thank you i don't like to take people's photos without permission and i graciously graciously thank you for that um please note that jennifer um margo ashley and myself and a few out of the the few other of the designers in our graphics group allow you to use our our photos and our mock-ups to gauge interest um, we did that as a service to you guys because we know sometimes you just don't have the time and sometimes easy is just best especially if we've already done it we're allowing you to use our photos those three were um, the main designers in that group uh, and we're the admins for that group you could definitely reach out to any one of the three of us but we that's you're able to use our photos um for that purpose i hope that helps by the way all right what time is it kev right now it's uh 18 minutes after 11. 18 minutes after 11. Woo you go to hailbound.com to pre-buy and order, 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 order. If you're looking to figure out how many, five to start out, I don't know. I don't know if you've never done them, but maybe you should. Gauge interest, gauge interest. Um, I think they're like 17 and change. So there you go. You guys are the best, thanks. You guys are all amazing for letting us use your mock-ups. You're so welcome. 819. It is not 819. Well, it may be 819 where you are, Jody. You're right. All right. So I have compiled some things that you need to know. So we're going to end this with some just some details when going for your vendor fair. All right. And we're going to be moving into next week. So here's what's going to come up for next week before I get to this list. Next week, we start building our table. We start building our display. We take a look at it, what we're gonna offer, how we're gonna build that space. Okay, so I might have an eight by 10 space. Well, then you gotta figure out how you're gonna do your table and whatnot. These things that I'm going to tell you are gonna help us build this table. I'm gonna show you some different creative display ideas that help you cut down on the amount of stuff that you actually have pre-pressed. Also, while I'm thinking about it, we have a lot of people who want to do custom right then and there and you want to drag that press with you. Here is a conversation I would like to have. I deliberately bought my 15 by 15 so I could travel with it. I bought it on Amazon. It cost me less than $200. And the reason being is because one, I could lift it without my husband. And this way I could put it on a cart and I could bring it with me and I could go and be at vendor shows with my 15 by 15. But if it broke, I didn't cry. I wasn't going to lose my mind if it broke. When Big Daddy broke, I think I mourned, okay, until I got the parts and I could get it fixed. So, yes, I mean, because Big Daddy's heavy and he was expensive. Little guys, not so much. So I didn't care that I only spent less than, it was $179. But that became my craft show press. 
I think really you should each have one. If you can invest in having one, that would be a good investment because then if it dies, then you're not out. But you can also use it while in your shop. If you notice, I use it in my shop. He's going constantly. So there you go. That's just some food for thought. Now, this is the time, if you're going to do those vendor fairs, it's the time to set up for those vendor fairs. You need to start calling local schools and churches. Start Googling vendor shows and start getting in paying your fees. Now, you're going to ask me what a go-to fee is. You don't want to spend hundreds of dollars in entry fees because you're not going to get it back. All right? You just... It's just not. If you're doing a local craft fair at a school, it really shouldn't cost you any more than like 50 bucks to be in it. Or it might be you have to donate an item. Really try to get in for the least amount of cost. Also, you also, 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 and we're gonna go into the do's and don'ts of what for vendor fairs. So, here's some reasons why I'm not gonna buy from you, okay? I have been doing vendor fairs since I was 12 years old. That was the first time my, parent, my mom decided that I was allowed to go to a vendor fair and sit there all day with her. And let me tell you, the knowledge that I've learned for the gazillion years that I've been on this earth, God, it's been 30 years. Um, here's why I won't shop, okay? I've been doing this for a long time. I would like to tell you a few things, and I'm gonna read what I wrote because literally it's a lot, okay? For over 30 years I've been doing these. All right, and I've been going to them and shopping and I can tell you what displays I'm going to walk past and what displays are going to pull me in. All right. And why I won't go, you know, and why I'm not going to buy from you. All right. First mistake. If you don't have pricing on your things, I'm less likely, although I'm a people person, I don't want to ask you. Okay, because maybe it doesn't fit in my budget that day. Maybe I only have a certain amount of dollars I'm bringing with me to spend on a craft fair. I want my pricing on absolutely anything, everything, all right? If you've got it in a basket, add a price tag to it. Um, if And you can even add a photo to it. So if you have it's a, a mug, mugs or whatever, keychains, add a picture of the keychain to it. So the people are visual, they go, okay, that's what they're talking about. All right, that's a, that's a tip and a trick. Prices on everything. You just don't want people to have to ask you because it can kind of be a very uncomfortable conversation. All right, no sign, no business, no business logo. I can guarantee you I will not go into your area. Why? Because then I know that you're just your typical hobbyist and that Honestly, you don't care about who you are. <laughs> it sounds horrible. And that's not exactly me, but I want to know that you're a legit business, business, that you mean what you're putting behind your product. So you're talking to me, okay, sign. You can take one of Stan's beach towels and use that as a banner for your table. It's a great, inexpensive thing to use. Um, you can go to Marvin and Todd. They'll make you banners for your, your space with the grommets and everything in them. So there's definitely, you definitely need your business logo somewhere. Put it in a photo frame. People aren't going to see it though. I got to be honest with you. You really want it on that tablecloth in the front. Um, just food for thought <laughs> on that. So no prices, no sign, no go. I'm going to walk right past. All right. Not enough. If your display does not have enough, I'm going to go, oh, and I'm going to do my, we all know I have facial expressions. I'm going to look at you and go, mm, okay, hi, moving right along. No, that's exactly what I'm going to do. All right, if you don't have enough on your table, then I'm going to wonder. But if you have too much that's overwhelming, I might not stop either. You really need to find a clever mix of what's enough and what's too much. Now, you could bring a ton with you, all right? Definitely hide it in under your table, leave it in your vehicle where somebody can run and go get it for you because you should always go to a vendor fair with somebody, never go alone, because at some point you're gonna have to wanna get something to eat or go to the bathroom, that's just how it is. Make friends with the vendors that are next to you. Make sure that after you've set up your table, go wander, all right? Go see before it opens what the competition is, all right? What are people looking at? Go get inspired. That's a great thing too, all right? Um, look at your display. Make sure there's a cohesive theme. If there is, you got cows on this side and you've got neon unicorns and rainbows over here, they're going to clash. 
make sure that your theme on your table matches, all right? Make sure that if you're using wood tones as risers or fabric tones, make sure you keep your fabric tones in the neutrals so that your product isn't being overwhelmed by the stuff that you're using, all right? Keep that also in mind, all right? Um, let's see. No draw. So how do you draw them in? Well, for me, for a Christmas fair, lights. You guys are like moths to a flame, all right? I am literally going to go to a display that has lights. Anything that sparkles. So if you've got stuff that sparkles, put that out front. If it's got lights on it, I'm there, all right? I'm a moth drawn to the flame for that one. So what's something that draws them in? Maybe it's a smell. Tip and trick, okay? Everybody's doing those air fresheners right now, which I'll talk about later at some point. Add a candle, you know, the air wick, whatever. Add some different smells. You might not be a candle person, but add some different smells to your display. Again, don't add anything perfumey, ever. Add baked goods ones. Ones that are like buttercream or apple pie, but not a perfumey apple pie. You really have to smell it because you don't want them to get a headache going into your space, but you wanna draw them in. Like buttercream is probably the my most favorite one to use at a vendor fair because people are like, I smell frosting. And I smell deliciousness and now they're into your space and you've drawn them in and I got twinkle lights and sparkle and they're all there with me and my display looks like walking into a country store okay I've displayed it in such a way where there's not 87,000 pillows and a hundred different shirts I've creatively creatively set up my display for shopability all right I like to display my items where it's you can touch it and feel it, but I will have it in the back, already in a bag or already in a box, labeled so that you could just literally grab that t-shirt box with those beautiful towels that you're going to do, and it's going to be labeled. It might even have a sticker of the item already in it. You can get those too. Make sure you just have really creative use of your space, all right? Packaging. Packaging is huge. I'm sorry, but if you're going to give me a box for my mug, you're totally going to get my sale because now I don't got to go out and buy the box. If you're giving me the box, woohoo! You're giving me a little bag, scar. There's little things that you can add that make it seriously more worth my while to stop at your spot. Also, freebies. I'm sorry, people. I know that's probably the worst thing you're ever going to hear any of us say. Freebies draw people in. That's another draw, okay? If you can give away a keychain, don't put your logo on it, by the way. Make them pretty. Your logo can go on the back, a little bit of name on the back, if possible. But for the most part, put a put a um, business card with it, all right? Don't, they, they're they not going to want to use something that has your logo on it. They're going to want to use something that's pretty, all right? So make sure that you put chapstick holders is a great, great give by, giveaway, all right? Give them a chapstick holder, all right? Make them pretty. Make them so that they'll be willing to use it, not something they're going to throw in the drawer, all right? But attach your business card to it. Now they're going to have your business card with all of your information on it, and they got a really pretty keychain that they get to take with them. Maybe they get a free item with purchase. You can do that too. Great gimmick, but it costs you less than pennies to make. So give that some thought when you're making different things. Um, let's see. Always have your business cards with you at all times, in your car, even at your display. But don't just lay them on your table haphazardly. Put them in something. Put them in a beautiful business card holder. Make them so that they're really nice, but don't just lay them out on the table to fill space. Fill your space with an actual item you want to sell. All right? Make your table look pretty. Don't clutter it with bull crap. All right? Um, also, for your vendor fair, if they're not advertising, then they're probably not worth your time. If you're not seeing them advertising for it, you're not seeing it on your Facebook feed, you're not seeing them in your local paper or on your news or in the radio, however they decide to, or the signage on the road, if they're not advertising, they are not worth your time, they are not worth your money. You want people who are literally advertising this fair to help you make it successful. And then you also create the buzz too, and it kind of starts the whole snowball um, item moving and going forward, all right? So make sure that those vendor fairs that you're doing have the advertising 
that you so desperately are going to need, especially if you're gonna put the time and the effort into something, all right? And like I said, use your friends. Tag those people in that post, all right? Tag a different set each day. They're gonna love you when you do that. But you know what, who cares? What's one tag? You might lose two friends. Oh well, your business name got out there. All right, put it on your business page, put it on your personal page, put it wherever you want. Don't put it in something more, I don't wanna know about it. Um, but <laughs> you can always send me a message and say, hey, do you think this is a good fair? And I can say, yeah, that looks good, or no, not so much. Also, look at your craft fair too. If you are in a school, okay, make sure you keep some kid-friendly items in your display as well because kids are a draw, all right? Um, somebody, a friend of mine uh, who's in our group, he lives local, what he does is he has his vendor stuff that he does, but he also makes a kid's table for our kids take make and take. So... For instance, and I'm gonna be testing these out, I bought the washable markers. You put it on a t-shirt, let them take a t-shirt, let them pick a t-shirt design. You get some 50-50 blend t-shirts um, in a couple different sizes and press them a shirt that they can sit there and color on mom and dad's shop. Or they are gonna make a magnet or they're gonna make a mug. Whatever the case may be as to what you wanna do for a kid's make and take, that's a huge market, believe it or not. Parents love it when their kids are occupied and then they can shop. So that's a food for thought idea. Maybe get two vendor tables. Um, vendor table where you can have your teenage kid or niece or nephew or something literally run a kid's corner. All right, run a kid's corner, sell that product for that kid's corner because parents don't want to be able to shop while they're buying your product. So there you go. It's a win-win either way. But if they're going to be kids at it, you definitely want to have some kid-friendly items. So those are my top do's and don'ts. Also, oh, wait, price discounts. Maybe offer a vendor price discount where if you buy more than one item, they get a discount or maybe a vendor show special only. All right, because then it also draws people in to buy from you at that moment. Um, custom make items. When you're custom making items right there on spot, you literally look at them. This is why you need two people because you're the expert. So that's right, I said you're the expert. Okay, when you're at a vendor show, you're the expert. Okay, you're the pro here. All right, don't degrade yourself. You're the pro. Own it, know it, love it. Okay. Bring somebody who can also, like I brought my best friend to one. She absolutely ate it up. She thought it was the best thing she's ever done. She absolutely just loved going with me to do it. And I loved having her there because she is as equally as exciting as I am. But I could do what I needed to do. She helped me out by running my table. Take a number, give them a number, say come back in 10 minutes, go shop around this way. It gives you enough time to press the item. Print, press the item if that's what you're going to do. And then this way, it gives it time to cool, especially if you're gonna do mugs on site. Um, gives it time to cool. And then they can come back and get their item. Make sure you take their name, their address, and their telephone number. And the reason being is because sometimes they do walk away. And if they're local, they have to come and pick it up. Um, and that's what you tell them. Tell them right out of the gate. Say, if you forget to come back, I'll call you and we'll set up a time to come pick it up. Or you can pay, you can pay me. Um, over the phone, whatever it is for shipping. So you're not out the shipping as well. And sometimes people just want to have it shipped. So there you go too. So those are some tips and tricks when you're looking at a vendor fair, some things you need to think about. That's a lot, it sounds like a lot. It's really the simplest process as you possibly can. So I hope that helps. I'm gonna look through, I'm gonna take a breather for two seconds, drink a little bit of coffee, read through the, the different things. Tell me if you wanna see anything else that I've done. Ask me your questions. I'm short today, which is fine. I left the time for that. I don't need to fill the two hours, but it was a whole lot of information. Um, and then we'll talk about what we're going to do next week. <sighs> what is the top cost for a craft fair? Top cost for me for a craft fair. That's a great question. Um, so they have this country craft fair that's at the local college. And you have to be juried for that. Um, they charge between five and six hundred dollars for two days. No, and no, I won't do it. I won't do it. I, I think less than a hundred is my top 
Because I have to think about it. I'm going to be out a hundred bucks if I don't sell a darn thing. So think about that as you're doing. And most of the time they want you to give away an item too. Oh, but you need to also add a $10 item to our Chinese auction. All right. Those are some things you might want to think about. If you sell not one thing, you're out that money. Plus you're going to be out the, um, the Chinese auction thing that everybody typically does. So there's that. You weigh what you want to weigh, how you want to do it. Um, yes, you could definitely cl collect their emails. Jess is like, say, collect your emails. I always do. I always have a clipboard. Let them put their email if they want to. Um, for links for discount codes or to my website or to my Facebook page, um, I, I do offer that to them. Um, vendor show specials, that kind of stuff. Mm. Yes, you do. Don't leave us. Jody. do I ever really leave you guys? I mean, seriously. Do you have a sequin pillows? I do have sequin pillows. Yes, Cheyenne. Seriously. And to be juried, I had to send them pictures of all the stuff that I made. And they had to decide whether or not I was worthy. Kicker. And all of this. So we're considered crafters in a, in a sense, even though we're sublimators, right? So I had to send them pictures of all the stuff I made. When I got there, there was a bunch of vendors of stuff that came from overseas, like ice cream uh, in the pouches, um, pocketbooks. People didn't make these pocketbooks, right? They're buying them from somewhere. So why did I have to be juried and spend five to six hundred dollars? That's what I couldn't wrap my brain around. So the answer was no, and that's why I didn't do it. I didn't care that it was a 10 by 10 space. I didn't care that it was for two days. That was way too much money to come out of my pocket. I love being on the porch and watching the sass. So relaxing here, getting ideas flying. Woohoo, Beth! That's my AIF friend. Um, wait, almost invested. Yeah, almost invested. All right, I don't know. <laughs> Um, well, you also had a time when you'll be working on orders and yes, and sending them home. Right. So, I mean, you just got to budget your time. Do you have a cart to put your printer and press on? Um, I have a table. I don't have a cart. I do have a table that I have it on. It's a, it's a two, it's two feet by four feet. It's one of the little ones that I put and I set it up on behind my I set it up behind my table because remember you want to draw them in um so there's different spaces i don't care that they watch me do it sometimes i mean it depends on where i am i, I mean i've pressed shirts live for people to see so it i don't hide that from my business um shirts in particular i don't hide substrates i may hide because my frustration may show on my face and lord knows i have a very expressionable face so when i've totally messed something up um, I don't need them to see what my facial expressions are saying very much out loud. <laughs> um, I used to live in Rogers and Grace shows. Awesome. Yes, sequin pillows. Stan's got a bunch of different sequin pillows. Um, definitely great for the holidays. Sequin pillows, I mean, they're all year type of thing, but you definitely sell a lot more sequin pillows at the Christmas time and the holiday time just because they sparkle and Christmas is all about sparkle and fun and delight and da 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 um, That's what the holiday season is all about. So I definitely know that they probably sell more at Christmas than they do any time during the year. Not that they don't. Um, they do. I mean, he's constantly selling them. So, But I just know they're a big deal at Christmas time. Does the county craft fair... Um, does the Crown County Craft Fair, do people pay to get into their fair? Some people do, some people don't. Um, you just have to call and ask them. County Craft Fairs are actually happening right now, like the county fairs. Um, I know here in upstate New York, I know you guys all have them all year round and whatnot, but um, the upstate New York people, we're now getting into county craft fairs, or county fairs. So you definitely do a county fair. That's one way to get your name out in your own county, um, or even the neighboring counties. That's a, that's a great lore in type of thing. Um, school craft fairs are a big thing. Note to self, just from personal experience, stay away from flea markets. Um, just because flea markets, people want to 
haggle your prices with you. Um, they want to find something on the cheap. They don't want to pay top dollar. Uh, that's what a flea market type style is. I know some people are very successful at flea markets and yay for them. I just know up here, that's just not going to be where I want to be. Um, I don't want to be haggling my prices. If my prices are what they are and that's just how it goes. Um, so that's where craft fairs at schools and churches and um, different types of things are. Uh, that That's my win right there. And for your, your online shops as well, um, you don't ever want to market yourself as less than. Market whatever you need to market at, but don't sell the farm, so to speak. After sequin pillows are pressed, why don't they look the same when you ruffle them? Because you're dealing with fabric. You have to remember, those sequins are sewn on with the tiniest of thread. All right? So think of a Christmas ornament. Christmas ornaments move, right? Here you go. They don't stay in place because they're literally held in place. Pretend this is a sequin. They're literally held in place by one hole that rocks on a thread. All right. They don't have a hole here and a hole here. So it stays because they have to be flipped. So no, you're never going to get it the same ever. Okay. You could sit there with tweezers all day long and it still won't be 100% perfect. But you at least want to find a sequin pillow where it's going to be close to perfect. Um... And I can show you. Did I do this one? I didn't do this one. This is the one I did. Um, I did do one that had a, a design on it when you flipped it. Um, give me two shakes of a lamb's tail, people. Where's my bag? My bag. Okay. So, would this be a good example? Yeah. These move. So when I first press them, I leave them. I leave them with the design. I don't flip them, typically. I flip them, you know, but after a while, I mean, you really gotta work at this. All right, this is the patches. His pillows are far superior to these patches that he has, and I know he's gonna kill me for that, but you know what? They really are. <laughs> the sequin pillows work far better. They flip far easier. They're a lot tighter sewn in, so they don't wonk as much when you're flipping it. Um, so these little thingies don't slide necessarily too much side to side because they're nice, tightly sewn in. It's hard to do the tightly sewn in on the patches, but the pillows, I gotta be honest, you wanna be able, when you're flipping sequins, this is why you don't go buy dollar store sequin pillows, people. Okay, they're crap, they're cheap. And I don't care, you wanna use them by all means. You wanna do that, that's on you. But I can just tell you they're quickly stitched together where these are definitely tightly woven. You want a tight weave on these, okay? So that's why I don't go and buy five and below pillows or Walmart pillows because again, for that reason, you want it to flip correctly. So that is that. Um. <laughs> see yep i have to up the price of flea market and everything you absolutely have to she's right um eileen says you have to up the price because people are going to haggle you so then your prices look astronomical than what you really want to charge and they're going to get on your website and go well she charged dot 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 why did i pay x number of dollars that's why i stay away from flea markets i don't want to have to deal with it um Let's see. Either Todd or, Todd or Marvin. Yeah, they're both moderators. I don't know what she's asking, but... Oh, and Marvin just popped in. Speak of the devil. For those who have no idea, Marvin's our techie guy. Mm-hmm. Say good morning, Marvin. Where do you get the sequin pills from? ConeyIslandTransfer.com And... He's got a wide variety of colors. I'll show you what I have in stock currently. So, his come in these beautiful bags, which are great for, so he's got like, a, and I know I'm missing some colors, Jen, just because I've sold out of them. But I have the green, the pink, the gold, the red. I think this is called Luna Blue. There's peach, there's black. There's royal blue, 
Um, what color is that? I apologize. Listen, I dig in this cabinet for you people after I, this is the black. So they have a wide variety of colors. They're a very tight weave. They work really well. Um, there's hot pink. He also has these bags. These are the backpacks. And there is actually, I have the first edition of the backpacks. I know there's a second edition where you don't have to worry about the, the um, drawstring on them. He has these that are also great for Christmas presents. People often ask me too, we're going to go back to the flag designs and why, and I'm going to show you right now, why I use one flag over another. So this is from a competitor. Of Amy's. Apples to oranges. I'm hoping you guys can see this. Just, I'm going to do it this way. Ready? Well, let's go. Let's put it up against here, shall we? So I'm going to show you the competitor, and this is why I switched. Do you see that? See how much you can see through that? I mean, I can almost see my tree through it. Okay? Apples to oranges. Now, yes, look at that. Do you see why I can double side it now? No joke. This is a no joke. This is why my garden flags are one of the top sellers because I use these. I have to literally get on top of the tree in order to use it, all right? So look at that. Apples to oranges, people. Competitor, Amy. There, I hope that helps you guys and why I'm such a stickler on this. Truly hope that helped. And we're back. Thank you, Amy. Or, uh, not Amy, but, um, Jen. Jen posted the colors black, gold, silver, red, rose gold, blue, luna blue, which is like a tealy blue, by the way. Um, hot, oh, no, that's the lighter blue. <laughs> they have teal. They have hot pink, purple, and peach. Pretty much every color of the rainbow, except for orange. They don't have orange. That's odd. I guess you could use peach. They don't have orange. Where do you... What do you sell your flags for at the show? It's the same price that I sell my flags for at home. <laughs> ha ha ha! That was a trick question. Um, I only buy Amy's flags. I love them. I love the single sided. I love that I can do them dual, dual purpose. If I had one sitting right here, I'd show you how I did it dual purpose. Um, but I don't because I packed it away. Um, what's the cost of the sequin pillows? Cindy, just look it up on their website. I don't know what the cost is off the top of my head. Just look it up on their website. Go shopping. In their both of their shops, by the way, or in any shop, they have a search bar feature. Just hit search and just write sequin. And anything that's sequin in their shop will come up. And just, just go look at it. Um, you don't need an account to go look at it. Just go look at it. The only one you have to have an account for, definitely, to go see things is JDS. There you go. Jen answered the question because Jennifer is just amazing. SublimationGardenFlags.com or Hailbound.com for those who have no idea and stand by URLs everywhere. <laughs> so you can go to SublimationGardenFlags.com or Hailbound.com. They'll both lead you to the same website and get you to where you need to be. So there you go. Any questions? Any questions? <laughs> Everybody says, good morning, Marvin. Oh, they're amazing prices. I mean, if you're going to go to the five below, let's get real for two seconds. You're going to go to the five below to buy a pillow. Awesome. You're going to spend $5 <laughs> on said pillow. But you're going to pay... The difference is, is yes, it's got the insert, so now they have to equate for that. So they have to go lesser on the quality of the sequence. Whereas he's selling a pillow case so he could up the quality and still give you the same amazing price. Does that make sense to your brain for two seconds? So think about it. If you're buying something at $5 that's a sequin pillow and it's already made, stuffed and all, they had to take an account of the stuffing that went into that pillow, which means they had to cut cost somewhere. 
They cut costs on the manufacturing of the sequins and how they're sewn in. On the other side, if I'm getting just a pillowcase, it meant they took all of that money they wanted to spend and put it just into the pillowcase and not the fillers. See how that works? So when you're looking at things, think of that in both levels when you're buying stuff from other places that aren't typically sublimation-esque items. Best way to present and ship garden flags. Um, at a vendor show, at a vendor show, I will put them on my banner flag holders and I'll have them so they could slide them. Um, that's how I do them at vendor shows. Um, as for the shipping part of them, um, I have to tell you, and, and Marvin's got the best way to ship things because he ships all the, the, he ships me all of my, my, uh, vinyl stuff. He makes my tags for my business. He makes my address labels. He makes my stickers and whatnot. And when he ships stuff, he takes a piece of cardboard and then puts put the flag on it and then sandwich it between another piece of cardboard and he tapes it all together um, so that it's flat because you don't want to wrinkle your flags. Yes, you could probably ship them in a, in a type of bag and whatnot, but my fear of that is is that they're going to get wrinkled, they're going to get caught, at least with it being sandwiched between two pieces of cardboard, it's going to be a little bit more stability um, for when shipping. That's just food for thought on that one. Um, I use the single-sided garden flags, but I press them double-sided. If you're going to press her single flags double-sided, you cannot put words on the back, and you don't mirror the back. So mirror the front with words, don't mirror the back with, without words because they'll never line up. So, and I did a whole thing on that. Um, oh, my daughter's watching when she's traveling. I use a square, is a square, I use square. Are we talking about for getting credit cards? We can talk about that if you like. I use lots. Um, who asked that question? Credit cards, I have the square. I also have PayPal's version of the square um, that I can literally just use my phone and it pops right into my phone and I can use it and charge credit cards right there on spot no matter where I am. I could be in the ball field, I could be in the middle of the mall, I could be in the grocery store, I could be anywhere and charge a credit card with a swipe with a square, with um, PayPal, whichever the case may be. The bonus part for me for PayPal is that I have a debit card that goes with it so I can use my funds instantly. There you go. Um, right. Square does. So does PayPal. Everybody charges. If you're using that little adapter for your phone, everybody charges um, per transaction. They don't pay a monthly fee like the big terminals do. Um, and they're just not practical in my world. I want to be able to take it with me. Whether I'm at a vendor show, in my shop, it doesn't matter. I have my Square no matter where it is. I don't have to be hooked up to a terminal per se. I don't need that big jalopy. I just need something small. Where's my... Yeah. Really, Jody? Oh, for Pete's sake. <sighs> there. Are you happy, Jody? Are you happy now? Oh my God. Damn, sign will die. Um, no, I took it down. I took free Dom down. You're welcome. She made it into in a pass. Yes, I did. You guys are so weird. All right. I think that covered. Oh, I did want to show you, um, revisit two ideas. While well, I'm thinking about it. A few ideas, actually. I want to show you different things. I told you I have the top ornament designs. Ugh. But there's some other different things that you might want to consider. So, yes, there is the aluminum round. Um, Stan has the heart. I think he has a heart around. I'm not sure which ones he has in stock. He'll have to tell you. But this is the polymer ones. So they don't break, chip, peel, nothing. Great for shipping. Um... Yes, you can do ceramic. I do a lot of these um, because people like them. So I have the ceramic snowflakes. I have it also an oval. Um, there is the MDF. 
which you can get MDF round. This one's from Stan. You can also take Amy's Mama Bear without the holes at the bottom, make that into an ornament. You can take her keychains, any of the shaped keychains she has, make those into an ornament. Stan has a keychain like I had showed you guys earlier on the top of the show. Keychain and made it into an ornament. Um, these are the different, this is actually glass, kind of looks like the acrylic, but this is the acrylic. So you put the image on it, you don't reverse the image, you don't mirror the image on the acrylic or the glass, you do it as is. That also goes for the glass coasters um, that Stan has. So here's another idea, like I said, I did the pinch book, holds about 15 sheets of paper, you just bend it back, you get these from Condi. Um, this was great for holding my grandmother's recipes. This was my go-to gift last year for my siblings and I printed out, cop scanned in and copied my grandmother's recipes and put them in the pinch book and I gave them each of that with an ornament um, because my brother lives in California, my sister lives in Florida and it has a picture of where we grew up on an ornament and it says there's no place like home and it was Snyder's Lake and it was a beautiful fall picture for them to hang on their tree because home is where you hang your hat but home is also where your heart is and home is where the three of us were and that was here in upstate New York. So um, I think I gave one to my mom too and then we did this this is actually my grandma's house i went and dug out some old fixed pictures from her i'm like grandma i need some old pictures and i took an old picture that she had of her house as i remember it growing up um especially with all the recipes i was putting in it were my childhood favorite recipes so this is another great thing it's great for not just like i said for pictures but great for recipes as well another good idea and i'm going to be pressing these just because i love the idea um, great for stocking stuffers, some stocking stuffer ideas for those grab and go for those vendor fairs. Socks, chapstick holders, stuff that they can put in there. But this is another good idea, um, another Condi type item. This is great for messages. I won't bend this because I have to press it, but it has a felt board. Definitely, you know, a little journal type thing. Great for putting recipes in, maybe even add a recipe to it. Um, great for a daughter-in-law, somebody who's getting married. Um, this would be a great start of a recipe book for them and put some recipes on the very first page. That's what you can encourage your clients to do. Um, so this is just some think outside the box ideas. If you didn't want to do just ornaments and towels and pillowcases, if you want to add some stuff to your website as to what to add, um, that would be a great, great idea. Um, I'll fight with this later. Let's see. You purchase the pinch books at Coney or at yeah at Condi. Um, that's where the pinch books come from. They come in two different sizes. That one I think is a four by six. Um, why are we PMing people? Oh, talking about PayPal. Um, thank you. I do have every. I have a good idea of once a show. I volunteer to help my organizations in your work area and be a fly on the wall to watch. I have to tell you a quick funny story before I tap out for the day. So a friend of mine sent me a picture. She is on the lake showing me this gorgeous sunset. She goes, this is my view. And I said, you want to see my view? Took a screenshot of my entire computer screen. I go, that's my view. She goes, got an awful lot of tabs open. And I said, yep, just like my brain. There is about 87 tabs running at any given time. And you can ask Stan because he's usually typically the one that I'm like, I got an idea. And I'll call him and Skype him and go, I got an idea. And he's like, okay, go, okay, goodbye. And that's it. Literally, that's the end of the conversation. Like I will talk to him for five seconds because I had an idea. He either yays or nays it or tells me I'm crazy. And most of the time it's I'm crazy. <laughs> and then I move on. So I literally have a tab going constantly, which is probably why I don't sleep. That's highly overrated. What packaging do you use for craft shows? Definitely look into bulk type items. Like I have um, boxes. They're down there. I have boxes for my mugs. I have, I bought these from Uline. These are great for jewelry. They're also great for small. You can get these in a variety of sizes, by the way. These are just drawstring bags. Um, they're a velvet drawstring bag that you can get at Uline. Um, great for putting ornaments in because I got to tell you, even though this is not going to fit, I'm just going to, well, it does, but not the way I want it. Um, this protects it, but it also makes it look classy. 
okay? And you could put some sort of, you can sub on these. Just make sure you put paper in between before you sub on it. Um, but you could put a little Christmas tree, just very something simple. Don't go with a logo, don't go with anything like that. Put something very simple on it because they're gonna give it as a gift. All right, so this is a thing that protects it, but you can get a variety of these. So Uline has the drawstring gift bags. Um, you can also get paper products from them and different gift bags. You can get just regular standard clear bags for them to have shopping. But I know that if you can get something that comes, and I'm more apt to at a vendor show, if it comes with a box, a bag, or something like this, I'm more apt to shop there because now I don't have to go and find a box to fit that. All right, you're, you're doing the step for me. Um, and maybe add that to your cost or you just give it as a free thing and yeah, just eat it. All right. Make sure that your pricing is good enough to where if you add a dollar box to it or a 50 cent bag to it, it's already into your cost. Yeah, that's called the price of doing business. <laughs> True story. Jen knows I do it all the time. I even do it to her. Um, yeah, I got that, Terry. Thank you, honey. I was like, why are we PMing? No, I got it, sweetheart. Um, genius brain. I don't know about genius. We can go, we can go with dysfunctional genius, maybe. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to wrap this cart up. We're going to talk about what we're going to do next week. We are going to literally, I'm going to start the building and the backdrop. I'm going to build it live. <sighs> Let's hope it's not a disaster. I'm going to build my set live next week and how I'm doing a vendor show, um, how we're going to plan it out. You're going to hear my genius brain, as you call it, and it's find us and how I'm going to work it and go, yeah, no, that doesn't work or how that is going to work because I'm going to do it on the fly. Okay. Because you're going to walk into any given space at any given time and say, create, you got to have an idea walking in, but it might not always be what you ended up being. Yes. You should definitely set up your table ahead of time. Just get a ballpark idea. But you never know who the person is going to be sitting next to you on either side. That can also play in your display or how big your space is. Make sure you always find that out too, how big your area is so that you know how to adjust accordingly. So that's next week's live because on the 21st, that display is staying up in my house for a week. And I'm bringing out the Christmas tree and we're going to set it up and I'm going to start the huge extravaganza for Christmas in July and we are going to have it and it's going to be fun and festive. Um, no, I'm not wearing anything Christmassy. I will die in the heat. I'm just telling you now. <laughs> so that is, the, this is the first part of series of three. Um, like I said, we talked about our top 10 list. I'll make sure that I include that in the links. I talked about the hottest colors of the season, which are navy and galvanized metal are huge this season. You could throw in some copper too for a little bit of added touch, but make sure you add in things like pine cones and pine leaves and or pine needles. Add those into your deciding displays and designs and all of that jazz. Buffalo plaid is actually the highest in there in what the theme is because it literally can play off any theme, any season, any holiday. So that Buffalo plaid, as much as I hate the darn thing, actually is a go-to. Um, they're kind of backing away. They still are doing the red Buffalo plaid, but the black and white is literally out and it's loud and proud and you can mix and match and add it to anything. Add some navy and some galvanized metal and you've got a beautiful Christmas display for the holidays. I also took that navy blue because it is the hottest color of our season right along with the traditional. And I brought it into my Thanksgiving theme where I used a blue pumpkin instead of your typical orange and white that you see. So it adds a little whimsy to your Thanksgiving design. As always, Always trust your instincts. Do you first. I know you guys ask me price all the time. Make sure you price what you are worth and know that I think you're worth a million dollars or more. You guys are worth more than anything that I could ever put an actual label on. So until then, I get to see you guys all next week. And until then, I'll see you guys all on the flip side. <laughs>